Hey guys, it's me Stormy and let's talk about the full moon that is quite adventurous, quite expansive, coming May 29th at 8 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this moon is actually interesting because while Sagittarius is very big, very expansive, uh, let's, let's get out of our comfort zone, you don't have to settle for less, this is a full moon. It's not a new moon. So this is a full moon, which means it's happening in polarities, right? So there's tension because the sun and the moon are in opposition. So instead of just being the kind of moon that I think is like, oh, don't settle for less, go out, go get your worth, right? Get out of your comfort zone. I think that this is one that says, I will not settle for less. There's a bit of tension that's happening here. There's a bit of opposition. There's a bit of um, contention that I think could be coming with this full moon as well. Now this full moon is also going to make some interesting little aspects. I don't think they're anything terribly big, but we're definitely going to talk about it as we break it down. We've got the full moon in a sextile to Mars, and then we've got the full moon in a semi-sextile to Saturn. And while yes, there's lots going on around it, these are the aspects of the moon that I think are important to talk about. So let's pull this chart up and start taking a look at what's going on in here, okay? So for those of you who are new to my channel, or maybe not new to my channel, but you've never just really listened to what the full moon meaning is and what it's about, the full moon occurs when the sun is opposite the moon. So if you look here at the chart, you can see that the sun and the moon are in opposition. They're on opposite sides of the wheel here. So what this does is it highlights for us our opposing inner forces, my needs versus my wants, my work versus my home, my internals versus my externals, whatever it is, there is conflict and there is tension that is actually put on display here. And because there's opposition, the full moon can make you a little bit tired. It may, you know, kind of drain your energy a little bit. You're trying and you desperately want to go one way, but there's these needs and responsibilities that are pulling you the other. So, you know, it could be things like that. Now, this is also the moon that we're talking about. So it encompasses moon things, my emotions, my home, my family, my nurturing, my relationships with women or, or my family or my personal roots, things like that. Because the lunar qualities have that emotional instinct, right, ready, available and at their grasp. So now when we're looking at the actual cycle, a full moon has its connection to the new moon. So that new moon that you started, those seeds of intention that you planted May 15th when the moon was new and in Taurus, you can see some of those goals that you, um, some of the goals and the milestones from the intentions you set starting to pan out a little bit. Maybe they're getting fine tuned. Maybe things have come to flourishing at this time. Maybe you need to make some kind of emotional adjustment around it because the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's a shift that needs to come. But whatever's gonna happen, the effects of this May 29th full moon, first of all, last about two weeks. So you have it up into the next new moon as well that will be happening June 13th. But you should be able to see some progress on your May 15th new moon goals, intentions, and ideas, manifestations that you put out there. All right, let's talk about the actual astrology that we're seeing here. Like I said, you can see lots going on, but the real aspects that are happening to and from the moon are, first of all, we have got the full moon here in this semi-sextile to Saturn, which I think is important to understand because you know, with the um, full moon in Sagittarius, that cosmic energy is just very adventurous. It really does stretch us beyond our limits. It puts us in a position where it's like, hey, there's more truth out there. There's more available. You want to see more. You want to travel more. You want to whatever. Um, there is just more than meets the eye happening. So get out there and get it, right? But what happens in this semi-sextile, even though it's useful and it's good, I do think that this moon being in the semi-sextile to Saturn can bring us down a notch, right? Because it's a very responsible energy. It can actually make it feel like you're trying to balance these two opposing forces, forces, your needs versus your wants, my, oh my God, I want to do this versus your responsibilities, and you're not able to really just run at it as quickly as you would like to. Saturn here actually, I think, helps you see what adjustments maybe you need to make. Where do you need to adjust your risk? Are you an investor? Do you need to adjust that portfolio? Um, are you traveling? Are you, do you need to actually get that insurance? Um, because this is the thing. 
that without reevaluating some of this energy, getting a little bit more grounded, I think that it's Sag is still a fire sign. You have the possibility to just make really impulsive moves that lack a little bit of maturity and lack a little bit of clarity. So you don't want to just be as easily blase and comfortable and easygoing at this full moon. You actually want some of this Saturn grounding to help bring you down. Now, as you see here, the sun is in a quincunx to Saturn. So you know what I mean? This is this is the thing. The sun in a quincunx to Saturn is your vitality is like, forget it. I want to do what I want to do. And Saturn's like, please be responsible. And you're like, I don't care. Right? Like you're just ready to throw some caution to the wind, which this is a full moon in Sag. If you're going to throw caution to the wind, like this is really one of those times to do it. But allow Saturn to help you out just a little bit here, okay? So whatever grounded decisions you need to make, whatever grounded risk you're kind of ready to take. Risk and grounding sound really funny. Sounds like oppositions, right? Sounds very full moon. <laughs> Now, the full moon being in a sextile here to Mars, this is actually delicious because remember, when the planets have sex, that's good for us. It creates a pocket of opportunity or a talent, and you will likely do something intelligent with that energy. So this creates a lot of enthusiasm, actually. You know what I mean? These are two fire energies. They're dancing together. Now, one thing that Sagittarius likes besides risk is competition. So you could find yourself being in some kind of competition you know so this is may end of may maybe we've got graduation you know who's going to be valedictorian maybe you're competing about something in sports maybe summer leagues are kicking off maybe whatever it is you could find yourself in competition you could even find yourself in competition with yourself right this is the deal um it's a time where if you are wanting to push forward and you're wanting to kind of follow this drive and instinct to fight for something that you want. This energy helps you kind of have it in your back pocket. This is also actually a great energy, I think, right now for a little bit of intimacy because it kind of gives you enough balls to say, here's what I need or here's how I need to be needed. So it's really, a, I don't know, it's a very satisfying moon, I think, for the most part. Uh, whatever the urge that it is that you have to go after, to do, to be involved in, I would tell you, Think twice about what you're going to do so you're making sure you're acting as maturely as possible, but be prepared to allow this full moon to show you where you can take a greater risk. You can get more outside of yourself, more outside of your comfort zone to have an experience you maybe never would have had without kind of coming into this, this form of reality here. So be patient, but enjoy this moon for sure, okay? All right, guys, get your Aries and Chiron videos. Get signed up for $3 Thursdays coming in May where we will talk about transiting Chiron in Aries through the houses, all right? Click in the description box down below for all of the goodies. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in June. Bye, guys.